Hi everyone. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we are on day two of a challenge. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Juliana Page. I'm the author of the God's Vibes Matter books. And right now we are embarking on a challenge of going through 30 days of growing in intimacy with God and really just embracing this season that we're in. So this is the God's Vibes Matter devotional and it was created out of really my quiet time with God and a formula, sort of a guide that he gave me to help steward that time and really be intentional about that time. And it is something that whenever I feel like I am drifting a bit or if I feel like I'm not hearing from God or if I just need to get back on track in a sense or just hear him more and really listen for that next step of obedience, it's something that does just get me right back on track. And so I wanted to share it with you and challenge you to go on this journey with me, hopefully for way more than 30 days. <laughs> For the process, the spiritual walk, getting spiritually fit is a lifetime. So I hope that it jump starts where you're at, whatever season that you find yourself in. And let's go ahead and get started. Today is not going to be as long as the intro. So if you want to hear more about the devotional or if you want to learn how to get it, it's on Amazon.com or JulianaPage.com. But you can go back and watch all these videos. They are on my YouTube channel. All right, so without further ado, I am going to pray and then I'm going to take you into what was going on in my quiet time today and how I worked through the devotional. All right, so Father God, we just thank you for this time. We devote this time to you, Lord. We invite you into this space, Lord, into this atmosphere, God, and we ask that you just shift the, shift the atmosphere, Lord, that you clear it of anything that was not put here by you, Lord, that you renew our mind, that you renew our spirit, Lord, renew a right spirit in us. I just declare a spirit of good stewardship, a spirit of excellence, a spirit of courage and boldness over everyone under the sound of my voice. And I just ask, Lord, that you create in us a clean heart. Lord, a heart that hungers for you, a heart that thirsts for you, a heart that is eager to receive from you, Lord, and a heart that is willing to obey you, Lord, with that instant obedience, Lord. I just ask, Father God, that whatever you would make known to us, Lord, that you make that known. And we just thank you, God, for your wisdom. We thank you, God, for your divine orchestration. We thank you, God, for your wonderful works, your wonderful new, and your goodness, O oh Lord. Make yourself known here and now, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, one of the first things that I was receiving today, I was honored. I know that I talked about really craving more time with the Lord, and I definitely got up earlier than normal today and jump started my day by the grace of God for sure um, and really just had some sweet time and sweet fellowship and totally got that prayer answered and so now the prayer is that I will maintain that I'll keep that discipline and self-control and just make that time because the conviction that I received is that we make time for what we love we make time for what we love and so for you know, prioritizing work, if we're prioritizing our workouts, if we're prioritizing time on social media, if we're prioritizing time to worry and fret, if we're doing all these other things, we could be giving that time to God and getting in his word. And if we're not doing that, well, what do we really love? So that brought some conviction today, led me to some repentance <laughs> um, and really now encouraged to stay in alignment and to really be more aware of what God is up to in this season for me. So bringing us back to the God's Vibes Matter devotional, the devotional is really set on this main scripture, although there's tons of scriptures, and I didn't mention this the other day, but even in the back here, in case you're traveling and you don't bring your Bible with you, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but in case you don't, because <laughs> bags, you know, you can only put so much in your bags, there are scriptural references for different things back here. So there's always a reference that you can look up and speak over your life. But the main one that this is set on is Matthew 6.33, and I'm taking this from the King James, and this is, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So there is such freedom 
instead of seeking all of these other things that we could be seeking and just seeking the kingdom. Just seek the kingdom. Do it first. Also, don't, don't do it at the very end of your day after you've already sought all these other things. Seek the kingdom first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So don't look for things that you control. Don't look for things that you can lean on your own understanding about. Seek his righteousness. Seek his Holy Spirit. Seek to learn about his character, his nature, his goodness. And all the things that he wants to be in your life will be added unto you. And he will even change your desires so that your desires align with him. Because his desires for you are truly the best for your life. Okay, so I walked us through a template of how to move through the devotional. And it's what we'll just call the pray template. And again, this is a guide. This isn't a formula that works for everybody, like you must follow this and this is the way to hear God, but it is a guide to help you hear God if you feel like you are not really hearing him or if you feel like your prayer is time is kind of unguided. So it's pray, praise, repent, ask, and yield. Praise, repent, ask, and yield. So a lot of times when we can go into prayer, we can be praying about what we need, what we want, our agenda and not thinking about God. So we're still focused on ourself or on our conditions and different things going on in our life rather than God. So this is to shift the focus and focus on God first and then allow him to bring you into his presence and shift your atmosphere quite literally. And then you'll be able to repent of anything that's not like God, that's not of God. You'll be able to ask him boldly for what it is that you want, trusting that he has done it and he will do it for you. And then you can yield as if he's done it and act as if and go forth in faith and courage and confidence, power, authority, so many things. And really just bear good fruit in the world. Because a lot of times if we're not running our day with God, our day has the potential to run us, which is not always fun. Okay, so going through my prayer time, and this is on page four of the devotional. It's always best to date it and document what God is doing in your life because there's something so powerful about looking back and seeing his testimony in his hand on every area of your life and every season of your life. God is always here. So it's so neat to see that he hears you, that he listens to you, that he answers you. Okay, so first the praise. Praise is remembering who God is what his word says that he is, and then writing it down so that you can start putting it to memory. So a lot of times when we write things down, we start to memorize it. So sometimes when we say it, we don't always memorize it. So my praise is praising God for who he is. And sometimes it's praising him for what I need in my life, but trusting that he's that, he's the answer. So for example, today, my praise looked like this. God, thank you that you are my source. Thank you, God, that you are my provision. Thank you, God, that you are what I seek. Lord, any place that I am seeking you, any place that I am seeking you through the form of expectations of others, through the form of material goods, God, whatever it is, God, I ask that you bring that focus back to you, God. Remind me that you are my provision. Remind me that you're You are my source, God. I thank you that you are the source of all things, God, that nothing can happen without your control, without your approval, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty. I thank you, God, that your purposes and plans for me are for good, to give me a future and a hope, God. I thank you, God, that your joy comes every morning, God. I thank you for your endless mercy and loving kindness. I thank you, God, that you forgive me, that you wash me clean, that you remember my sins no more. I thank you, God that you go before me and you are my rear guard, Lord. You have my back. I thank you, God, that you make the wrong things right and you guide me in your truth and you lead me in your righteousness in Jesus' name. So if you're doing praise right, (laughs) you can get stuck in it, which is so beautiful and where you want to be. And oftentimes, if you're really practicing that and like working out your spiritual muscles, if you're doing that, then you can remember that throughout the day. So God asks us that we put him in remembrance. So rather than putting all these other things on our mind or filling our conscience with things, 
to beat ourselves up about, for example, rather than doing all of that, put God in remembrance. And so getting really good at that is a blessing. Second one, repent. What do you need to release that is hindering your connection with God? What cares are you carrying that God desires to carry? What is God teaching you to trust him with? And what do you know to be true? Confirm with God's word versus what you feel. Now, yesterday I moved through what you see here. There's like a little template of what you can release of any cares that you can cast and what you promise that you're going to trust God with. So today I'm going to go through some of the questions. Um, I asked myself these questions just like I have them written here. What do you need to release that is hindering your connection with God? God, I feel like I need to release my frustration. Frustration is not of God about how I am being treated at work. I know, God, that I have intentions to show up and to serve you and not man. I know that I have intentions to honor you in what I think, say, and do and really forward your purpose and plan in that environment and honor the authority in that space. And it is difficult for me and my human self to do that when I feel like there have been blatant attacks, when I feel like communication has been very manipulative and I feel like it's out of my control. So God, I release my focus, my preoccupation on what I can't control. And I trust God that you are in that space. I trust God that you're using it to grow me and build me. And I trust God that you are giving me strength and courage to show up boldly in that atmosphere, regardless of what is happening. Lord, you are my strength, God, and I can do all things through you who strengthen me, God. So I release wherever my focus has been drifting away from what I know to be true. And I just pray, God, for the grace to show up new in that space and truly continue to honor you as long as you have me there. I thank you for the gift of work. I thank you, God, for putting me in that environment and for everything that you're teaching me and for every way that you are growing and transforming me. And I thank you, God, that you are blessing me to be a blessing in Jesus' name. And so when you repent of not having the mind of Christ, when you repent of having uh, the wrong attitude or starting to get preoccupied on the wrong thing, when you do that, then God can truly take from you what has been hindering you from being connected and remembering him. And ask, what? Ask God for what you have need of according to his word. Take a scripture from his good news to you and declare it over your life as an answer to whatever you are facing. Okay, so I have been feeling it a lot lately that I have been shifting into a new place, a new opportunity, um, and stepping more boldly into destiny. And so my desire lately more so than anything is to know the will of God. I don't want to get out ahead of God like I have in the past. I don't want to run my own agenda and I don't want to build anything that God isn't in. And so I've been hearing a lot in my spirit, new opportunities, um, new growth, new beginnings, new relationships, new connections. And I believe that God absolutely has that for me, but I want to make sure that I'm moving according to his will, right? So what I've been asking God for is that he will reveal his will to me. So if I'm backing that up with the word, something that really spoke to me was coming from Ephesians 5. So if we're ever wondering how to know what God's perfect will is for us, right? There's the good, acceptable, and perfect. I want the perfect will of God in my life. I don't want just what is good, right? So if you're wondering what the will of God is in your life, you can find it out by looking in his word. <laughs> but to break it down in all seriousness, the first thing is you have to give your life over to the Lord. You have to surrender to him completely, number one. And then his word will start becoming active to you. And so number two is you start fellowshipping with God by opening his word and letting the word literally cleanse you and wash you clean and work on your mind, transform your mind, renew you. And that's number three. So number one is surrendering to God. Number two is fellowship time with time with God. 
And number three is letting the word wash and cleanse you, restore you, renew you, all the beautiful benefits of being covered by God's grace. So what he led me to, though, was coming from, here it is, Ephesians 5, 17, and I'm in Amplified today. It says, therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish. That's pretty clear. But understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. So what I was learning here is that understanding is applying your mind to the word of God and questioning yourself to see if you understand it. So you find the will of God by being consistent in being in his word and fellowshipping with him. And it's such a powerful passage because if we obey the word of God and stay in constant communion with him, we can start to hear him. Our thoughts start to become his thoughts and we can really recognize what he is leading and guiding us to do. He will affirm it. He will give you um, little affirmations, whether it's through his word, which is a big way. You can hear different songs throughout the day. Other people can speak life into you. There could be a prophetic word given to you, but he will affirm his will if you are seeking it and seeking to understand and firmly chasing after him. So I was given that confidence today that if you seek him with all of your heart and let that be your focus, in due time, he will make the will, his will perfectly clear. So that was encouraging to me. And a little prayer that I had written down was this. Heavenly Father, I want to believe things can really be different for me. I want to receive everything you have for me. Help me to surrender fully to Jesus. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I want to be used mightily by you. Thank you, Lord. So sometimes we can feel like we have a sense of God's will or maybe the minute we start really tracking with that, there's distractions and other things that come up and kind of pull us off course. And so seeking God's will is something that is a daily thing and as long as you are in his word and keeping communion with him you can't miss it and you can't get off the path so thank you god that you reveal your will to me thank you god that i increase in understanding and i am firmly grasping what your will is for me in every area of my life according to ephesians 5 17 it is so in jesus name so that's the ask and then the yield is take what God has revealed to you in this time and receive it with a heart full of gratitude. If God is revealing his will to you, then you don't have to chase after your purpose. Then you don't have to chase after your destiny. You don't have to go on this crazy hunt to figure it out. He will reveal it to you. And so your job is to focus on that communion and being still with him because God reveals himself in stillness. Turn what you've learned into a prayer of thanksgiving to your heavenly father. Thank you, God, for the revelation that you reveal your will in stillness. Thank you, God, for this reminder to make time for you, to invest in this relationship with you, and to just allow you to speak your life into me, speak your renewal into me, speak the wonderful new into me so that I can perceive it as it springs forth, Lord. I desire to perceive it, and I thank you that I now do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can leave you with today. Those were the main things for sure. But the other scripture, I had one more scripture. If you too are feeling like you want to know more clearly God's will for your life, because God is definitely not the author of confusion and he desires to reveal his will to you. And you also want to feel empowered to make the right decisions in any issues in your life. So there is this verse, Colossians 1, 9. For this cause we also, since the day heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So according to Colossians 1, 9, thank you God for greater knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding on behalf of myself and everyone listening. Another one is that this is coming from Psalm 
1037, God has made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. God, thank you that you make your ways known unto us in Jesus' name. And then Paul says it this way, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Philippians 3.10. And then also this one, Paul encourages us not only to ask for his will, but to pray for the wisdom to build and the understanding to establish. So here's coming from Proverbs 24, 3. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. So Lord, we thank you not only for the wisdom and knowledge of your will, but the understanding, the strength, the good stewardship, the integrity to build it. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope day two of this devotional blessed you, and I hope that you'll get the devotional and join me. All right, everybody, be blessed.